This year's World Series of Bowling has been an international success story, with players from all over the world bringing some serious game against the American stars of the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour. Now, the ultimate battle, the first ever USA versus the world. Team versus team, player versus player, national pride on the line. Is America's bowling supremacy in jeopardy? It's the USA versus the world at the World Series of Bowling. And we welcome you to Las Vegas in the South Point Hotel and Casino for professional bowling's version of the Ryder Cup. Team USA taking on the world from Las Vegas. Here are your individual matchups. Haugen, Russell, Malott, Rash, Barnes, and O'Neill for Team USA taking on some of the best the world of bowling has to offer. Rob Stone, soon to be Hall of Fame inductee Rand Peterson here with you. Well, the world's best are here going individually, but also in a team format as well. Absolutely. And this reminds me of watching the classic men's league on Friday night at your local center. But instead of five, there's going to be six players on each team. The format is as follows. It's going to be one game, but each team member pulls a complete 10 frame game. So we'll have six head to head matchups. Now, each matchup is worth one point. The team with a higher total pinfall earns three points. There's nine points out there, Rob, but you only need five to win this competition. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's USA versus the world. Handshakes between our first two individual competitors, Michael Haugen Jr. and Kimo Lettman from Finland. Kimo, an interesting personality, also a wonderful bowler, Randy. Yeah, and Rob, he's really going to be tested today, making his first ever televised appearance here in the United States. We'll see how the Southpaw handles the nerves and how he matches up to the old pattern. Michael Haugen Jr., no stranger to television. See him here taking care of Chris Barnes, winning a major, the Tournament of Champions. Michael Haugen knows what it's like to bowl under the hot TV lights here in the States. So Michael Haugen Jr. will start on the left lane. The entire American team will row on the left lane through the first frame, and then the two sides will switch. So the native of Carefree, Arizona, starts it off, and then Kimo Lettinen from Finland will follow immediately. Mm. Messenger, not enough roll to take care of the 10. We slide on over to the right lane. It was great when we got to meet this gentleman, Kimo Lettinen. We spent about, what, the first five minutes going over the proper pronunciation of his last name. <laughs> There's some mysterious letters in there that Randy and I seem to be missing. But we have found the lefty, the smooth stroke. And there's our opening jack. Oh, I like it. Little pose down. Lettinen with the first strike. Haugen up to try and clean up the 10 pin on the left lane. So now Haugen up to try and get the spare. Takes care of the 10 pin and Randy. The easiest kind of parallel to another sport you can come up with at this event is Ryder Cup from the golf world. Without question. And here's a look, Randy, at our second individual matchup. We go Canada versus Team USA and hard throw in Dan McClellan from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Two very similar styles. You see the big high backswing from Dan McClellan and all that power. Ronnie Russell possesses the same type of equipment. Although Dan McClellan did struggle at the World Series of Bowling, he gained invaluable experience and knowledge. He'll have to apply that experience today. Ronnie Russell has been here before. He knows what it's like to bowl under the bright lights. He finished second at last year's million. He also has a second place finish at the Atonic Marathon. Dan McClelland from Canada. Smooth roll and a tough lead. Oh, he had a rough World Series of bowling. He made two TV shows, but really wilted under the TV lights both times. Here's Ronnie Russell, the native now of Marion, Indiana. Recently moved in the offseason, seeking his first PBA Tour title. Ronnie Russell, right down the middle. Big four on frame two for Team USA. Yikes. 
the nice part is his opponent's also going to have an open frame. So unless point. Ronnie Russell can convert the big four, it's going to be probably eight to nine in that match. Remember, there's still total pins on the line, but you also want to beat the person across from you. Russell only takes care of the seven. So Team USA still seeking a strike. Oh, well. Here's the other head-to-head -head matchup, if you will. Jason Del Monte taking on Wes Malott. Jason Bell, Orange, New South, Wales, Australia. Three times a runner-up last season. Yeah, there's only one coming in West Babylon, Long Island. But boy, is he sure fun to watch. And that unique two-handed style creates a lot of speed and a lot of power. The pins have no chance. West Malott, no titles last season. Yeah, but you know what? He was he is a former player of the year, and we all remember what he did at the King of Bowling Bowl. Not one, but two, three hundred games. I mean, this guy just owned the Scorpion Oil pattern. Delmo is in the Scorpion and the Shark Show at the World Series of Bowling. Did not get a title in either one. Two-hander gets the seven to drop late. Another strike for the world team. Oh, what's this? You, you walk in front of your opponent, you go over to the other team to get five. O'Neill shuns him. Looks like Jason Belmonte's already starting with the gamesmanship. I'm not sure you want to make the big nasty angry. I know you don't want to make the big nasty angry. Here is Malat from Pflugerville, Texas. Whoa! Whoa! Did I mention whoa? I think he's fortunate to get eight on this shot. He's fortunate to get a pin on this shot. <laughs> Out of his hand poorly, went to the right and stayed right. Well, as ugly as that first toss was, he walks away with the spare. But his international competitor, Jason Belmonte, with the strike. Now our fourth head-to-head -head matchup. There's Lee Palermo in the last show, won the Shark title. And an invite to the TOC will be taking on Sean Rash. Well, that two-handed style is fun to watch. And when they get to the extreme inside part of the lane and start lofting it over the left gutter cap, well, Rob, it's pretty unfair to us mere mortals. Sean Rash, no stranger to power or speed himself. And who can forget when he won the Masters at Miller Park. I guess all I really have to say about that is, yeah, baby, yeah, well, well put, baby. Thank you. Well put, Rash, your number two seed at the PBA World Championship, which takes place next week here in Vegas. Here's your three seed, Oski. Boom! Blows up the rack. Using a urethane ball. John Rash, four Lumber Liquidator PBA Tour titles on his resume. Well, hang on that left lane, Rob. Mm -hmm. On our last show, the Shark Championship, and again, it's a different oil pattern. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. They're bowling on the Cheetah right now, but that left lane is an absolute nightmare for everybody on our Shark Show. Yeah, the left lane was a train wreck. It, it was awful. And part of that was because of the way the players broke down the oil pattern. Oh, quick hands by Mika Koivu Niemi. He and Chris Barnes, longtime buddies, Randy. Longtime buddies and rivals on the lanes, Rob. These two have, uh, well, they have a history. Major Mika getting his nickname because the first two tournaments that he won in his career, both majors, the 2000 Masters and the 2001 U.S. Open. I love the loft, his trademark form, that loft coming from a style that he learned bowling in Europe. Chris Barnes, well, he's no stranger to winning majors. He won the 2005 U.S. Open and the 2006 Tournament of Champions. But you ask Chris Barnes, he's left a lot on the table. A lot of rivalry here. I promise you, there's only one thing going through Chris Barnes' mind right now, and that's beating Mika. So Mika Koivu Niemi taking on 
the American Chris Let's do your thing. A little head games from the big Finn. Hmm. Wonder Chris, if it worked. Well, Chris Barnes a little sly smile after that effort from Mika. Team USA still without a strike. Going after 36 10. Mika covers it. Barnes going after the 4 7 on the left lane. Takes care of that. So that individual matchup tied. And now we go to our. It's the simplest way to call is your, your anchor guys, your, your cleanup hitters, if you will. Yeah, and starting with Hall of Famer Avaletta Monicelli, 19 tour victories. This guy has really done some amazing things throughout his career. I remember the first time I watched him little throw it back in the early 80s. And, again, everybody was trying to change his style, and you know he had this real unorthodox backswing and his left arm straight out in front of him. Well, good thing he didn't because he turned out to be a tremendous talent and a Hall of Famer out on this tour. Speaking of a guy that uh, can throw it, how about Bill O'Neill? Wins the Pepsi Viper World Series of Bowling. He has a U.S. Open victory to his credit. Bill O'Neill has really lived up to his nickname. He truly is the real deal. In the Hall of Famer, there you go. Amleto Monicelli, the native of... Say it for me. Barquisimeto. Venezuela. I will never get tired of that. As long as we work together, I will never tire of that. Oh, pretty shot. That Hall of Famer. Mm. Still has the moxie. You guys can hang out in the Hall of Fame club in just a couple be, weeks, right? Be in his club soon. Nice. I can't. I, did you get a guest pass to the Hall of Fame club? Can I tag along once, maybe? There's Bill O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> the only strike for I did Team not, USA. I didn't think that pocket would collapse like that. So they end on a good note, does Team USA. One frame down, total pins advantage, Team World by two. Play number two when we return to Vegas. ESPN and the PBA welcome you back to our coverage of the USA versus the World first event here. 2011 and time now for our lumber liquidators know the wood my good friend and soon to be hall of famer randy pierce the cheetah oil pattern is the shortest of the five named animal patterns at only 35 feet in length but take a look at this beautiful blue color right here this represents the heaviest concentration of oil but you notice if you look to the outside part of the lane no blue why hey no oil lots of friction to the outside now don't kid yourself, this is not a typical house shot. Typically your league or house shot is a 10 to one ratio, bunch of oil in the middle to that drive. This is still a two to one ratio, but anytime you give our players friction to the outside part of the lane, they are gonna destroy that oil pattern. Cheetah, dry outside. There's a little spot that is causing an issue in that left lane. Team USA only had one strike in their first frame. Here's. Chemo, the world team's first effort on the left lane. Ooh, the late kick of the 10 will help his spare effort, or late kick of the 7, I should say. Uh, the second frame is going to possibly turn around for Team USA because they're off the left lane, now onto the right lane. Haugen, his first effort for the second frame. Lead off hitter for Team USA. A little drop and give me 10. Chemo goes up and whiffs on the spare. Well, after the little flex in the first frame, it's tail between the legs. Chemo needs a hanky. Check this out. Gets up to shot the 2-4. Now he's got to go back and face his teammates. Well in the Canadian. Yikes. Could it be back-to-back -back open frames? I mean, th this is a really good bowler. Very talented, former All-American at Saginaw Valley State, a kid you really like. 
Boy, under the lights, it has been rough for him here in Vegas. Johnny Russell. Pretty, pretty stuff. Do you think there's a difference now between the right lane and the left lane? Just a smidge. And the Americans get to finish on the right lane. Back-to-back -back open frame, so Ronnie Russell takes the lead in that head-to-head -head matchup. Now it's Mowat. The big nasty on the left versus the Australian, Jason Belmonte. And Belmonte working a lot mentally right now. I mean, Russ is just dancing with the gutter, but it works right there, yeah. Belmo with the strike to match. Kimberly Pressler in the crowd, the very special Hall of Famer. That's right. I am with Carmen Salvino. Now, Carmen, you are a legend in the sport. You're also a great ambassador for the sport. What do you think about the quality of those international players? Uh, I'll tell you, they're great. About 10 years ago, there was a big gap, but today, that gap is closed. It's amazing. You'd have to flip a coin who's going to win. But also, another interesting thing is these two-handed bowlers. They were throwing the ball so far out of the way that we have to call the tower and see if there's any airplanes in the area. Now, you are a very young 77 years old, and you are still competing professionally. You're going to be in the Tournament of Champions. Mm -hmm. How is that for you? Well, that's true, because I still work out with weights. I work out on a bike. In fact, I'm going to be bowling 100 games the week before I bowl that Tournament of Champions to make sure I'm in shape. Well, we wish you all the very best, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's an honor bowling with the guys, believe me. Well, it's an honor just to have Carmen in your general vicinity, to be honest. Without question. What a great guy. Mika, no strike for you. Once again, we see a ball not getting to the pocket on the left lane. The left lane is going to be key. Which team can figure out the left lane enigma will come out on top. Mika Koivuniemi covers the spare. And Rob, I think the other thing that you have to ask yourself is how much pressure because of this competition is starting to get to the players? That's a good point. Here's Bill O'Neill who had one of only three strikes so far in that left lane and misses the pocket badly here on the right lane. He recently won the Pepsi Viper, the third career tour title victory for O'Neill. Here's Enleto Monicelli, voted the 21st greatest player in PBA history. back-to-back -back jacks so he has a lead now on O'Neal oh big nice. pickup from Billy O big pickup and that is our bear trusted pain relief replay brought to you by the makers of bear aspirin two down eight to go the world team was up two after the first frame. They've extended it to five. Welcome back to our presentation of USA versus the world in the individual battles. It's three apiece between the USA and world, but the world team in the total pinfall with a five pin advantage. Again, the total pinfall per team worth three points. There are nine points sitting out there, first essentially to five. This will be your winner. We get set to start the third frame. Michael Haugen Jr. up 14. So Haugen with a pair of strikes now. Kimo working off an open frame. Remember, he whiffed on the 2 4 in the second frame. And the world team back to the friendlier confines of the right lane. And Rob, you're trying to take advantage of the good lane. Kimo makes a pretty good shot here, but that ball was a little weak when it entered the pocket, leaving the seven pin. And right now, if you're Kimo, you're trying to not bury your team 
Let's convert the spare. Kimo gets the spare and another finish celebration. He's so trying to get his 15 minutes, right? That's right. Jason Belmonte joins us now. And, uh, Belmo, how do we rate Kimo's celebration so far? Well, look, I said this a little earlier. Um, you know, in Finland, there are a few, there's a few days there where the sun doesn't come up. So they just all become crazy. Um, <laughs> Kimo, Kimo's celebrations are famous around the world. He, uh, you know when he's bowling good, when he's dancing on the approach. Or in this case, as long as he gets a spare, he's quite happy right now. <laughs> Kimo always in his own little world. Danny Mack. Drops the ball there in the third. His first strike after back-to-back -back open frames. Ronnie Russell on the left. Brings that one up in the third. 2011 PBA World Championship. Three nights of live coverage begins next Friday on ESPN2. And that match, you'll have Wes Malott, your seventh seed, taking on Jason Belmonte, your eighth seed, the winner to take on six seed Michael Haugen Jr., the survivors. Bowl on Saturday and then Sunday. They're waiting in the wings, your number one seed, Bill O'Neill. And here is Wes Malott. The big nasty, leaves some double wood. And here's Belmo, one of two two-handed bowlers on the world team. A lot working off the strike, trying to clean up these last two pins. So Malat goes spare strike spare. And not the easiest spare conversion, the 2-8, but nicely covered. Belmo trying to convert the 3-6. And Melmo, strike, strike, spare. So that one a tight affair. I say like that that's like striking for me on that frame? That, that's a huge frame, everyone. We figured that one would be a fairly tight battle here as Sean Rash trailing Palermo by 10. Rash still seeking a, to gain some ground on Osku, who won the Shark Championship in the last telecast. Strike, strike, strike! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, a nasty messenger! <laughs> Ouch! That's one of the fastest messengers you'll ever see. Oh, this, this is just sick stuff. Watch this. He didn't like it out of his hand. And I was like, uh, yeah, that was good. Oscu, one of three Finnish nationals on the world team. <coughs> I mean, you see that in MMA. They just drop the competitor out. Take out the smelling salts. Staying with our Finnish theme, Nika Koivu in the Emmy, trailing Chris Barnes by one in their head-to-head -head match. Heavy on that one was Mika. Three, six, nine, ten. Not what you want to see. Barnes blows up the rack. So, a pair of strikes now for Barnes. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> he wasn't sure about that when I was taking Rob. Five minutes. Bill O'Neill down 10 in his head-to-head -head battle versus the Venezuelan Monicelli. O'Neill, strike, and a spare after Jane. Wash out and gets another strike. So O'Neill, two strikes on that left lane. Monicelli looking to start off with an opening triple. Leto and Oscu Palermo starting off with three baggers. World team was on top by five pins after two. Ooh, things changed after three. Team USA takes the overall lead by one. Kimberly Pressler back here with you in Vegas. Our continuing coverage of USA versus the world through three frames. 
essentially tied at three apiece in the individual battles. The total pins advantage for now for Team USA. The first time they've had the total pin advantage. And again, total pins, when this one is all done, worth three points. The individual matchups, each worth one. Michael Haugen with a big lead right now. Over Kimo Letonen. Kimo missing the head pin. It's a little help on the tail end of that one. Was it Jason Belmonte who said just a, a while ago that they would be happy if Kimo just got a mark? The Kimo would be happy if he just got a mark. <laughs> Oh, and Michael Halgan Jr. is just giving Kimo a good old-fashioned American beatdown. Three strikes in a row now for Halgan, who, Randy, was a dual-sport threat in his high school days. I ran cross-country and uh, track in high school. Um, I got all league in uh, my senior year in, uh, in cross-country, and uh, I think the fastest three mile or fastest one mile I ever ran was 444. So I had some talent there, but it's a lot of work running around all over the place, you know, and uh, and you know run 10 miles a day or air-conditioned bowling center it was pretty much no-brainer and michael your sixth seed you'll see him in action this coming friday night on espn2 he'll take on the winner of the jason belmonte west malott matchup chemo trying to clean that mess up on the left lane and more issues for chemo yeah and this is starting to get serious for him with all the pressure and everything riding on this event chemo has now opened in two of the first four frames. Ronnie Russell, 10 better in his individual matchup with Dan McClellan. Russell in the fourth. There's his second strike. Oh, I like that. Well, games midship by Ronnie Russell. Walks in front of big Dan Mack. Danny Mack, open frame, open frame, strike. <laughs> and another strike. And that kind of answered Ronnie Russell's strike, didn't it? Unfazed by Ronnie Russell walking in front of him before he steps up on the approach, and he just puts 10 Malott. back in the pit. Wes Malott, your seven seed in next week's PBA World Championship. Gets the ball to drop. <laughs> Big Nasty with his second strike. Belmore looking for his third and not finding it. Jason gets set to try and clean up the spare. We go down lane side. Kimberly standing by with oh. M. Leto. Oh. That's right. I'm with M. Leto. Now, M. Leto, are the two lanes playing differently? Uh, yes. Uh, the right lane's hooking a little more, uh, but I'm trying to do the same thing on both lanes. Uh, just uh, soft hand so it doesn't hook too early to me. But there are about a couple boards hooking more the right lane. Now, you are one of the original international guys that played here in the U.S. in the PBA. What do you think now that so many international guys are coming here to play? Well, I think it's great that I kind of opened the door. You know, uh, that was about a long time ago. Let's not talk about how many years. But uh, I think it's great because, um, as we can see, there are great bowlers all over the world. And I think it's a great experience for, you know, all of us uh, to compete against the best bowlers in the world. You know, that's the way it should be. Exactly. Back to you, Rob. M. Leto, owner of a bowling center in native Venezuela. Sean Rash cleans that one up there in the fourth. Taking on Oscu Palerma. Oscu, three strikes in the first three frames. Gets that two pin to kick out. go to the shiny one the shinier one and that. Barnes up 15 over Mika Koivu Niemi his effort in the fourth uh -oh. there's a three bagger for the American native of Double Oak Texas 12 tour titles two majors on his resume Try to get that done now. What's that? Shirt that with him. <laughs> nothing but spares thus far through three. There we go. Finally a strike for the big fin. Even I strike. Got the hell off my 
<laughs> Randy, the holidays may be over, but that doesn't mean you can't continue to shop, right? Exactly. Head on over to PBA.com and buy your official PBA merchandise and apparel. Shirts, hats, hoodies, polos. Click on the shop tab over at PBA.com. O'Neill leaves the 3610. O'Neill struggling on the right lane. Everybody else struggling on the left lane. Yeah, O'Neill with two strikes on the left, spare, and then we'll see what happens next. O'Neill Shelley, four in a row, an international hambo. What's up, old man? And he is That's dialed in. Man. Right lane, left lane, doesn't matter. O'Neill trying to clean this one up in the fourth. And he does. And that'll put an end to frame number four. So Monicelli, perfect through four. But the USA extends their total pin lead from one to 16 through four frames. World team held the total pin lead, Randy, through the first two frames. Since then, the pendulum has swung and swung hard in the favor of Team USA. One of the reasons for that, Michael Haugen working on a three batter and has a huge 49 pin lead over Kimo Lettonen. That's good. Yeah. So here is Haugen. Well, that was a full yank, but at least he leaves himself with an easy one-pin spare, single-pin spare, rather. Can Kimo get a mark? Yes, he can. All right. There's the celebration. So he had a strike in the first, and now one here in the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> the director of applause. Oh, he's working it. Haugen, who doubles as an assistant coach for the men's bowling team at Arizona State. We mentioned this a couple weeks ago, Randy. Another plug for Mr. Haugen and the Sun Devil program. They're trying to fire up a women's team there at Arizona State. They need a couple more bowlers. No athletic scholarships there, but academic chances are available. Love to see us personally load up at Arizona State women's bowling team, doing our part. the ball to drop. Hey, this, this is the same kid that had no breaks the last time he was on a show during uh, the Shark Championship. Remember that? And the Scorpion Show. A and the Scorpion Show. And he, he, he started off kind of kind of rough. Uh, but he got a nice little break there on a double kick in the two pin. Finished fifth in the Scorpion and was runner up after being the number one seed in the Shark. Ronnie Russell. One of the really good guys who's never won on this tour. <laughs> Row. We call that four through the middle, Rob. He actually hit the head pin and got less than half. This ball is going to cut right through the schnoz and watch this. Three, four, six, seven, nine, ten. Jason oh, yeah, Delmar has had some struggles here, but only trails West Milan by five in their individual matchup. Another messenger from another two-hander on the all-world side. Look at that. Oh, that Mr. messenger had to travel a distance. That was a plastic ball. <laughs> I love the facial expressions here. <laughs> Osku with a massive 23-pin advantage. Set to add on to that, potentially. Jason Belmonte using plastic, Osku Palerma using urethane, which sure is nice to have that power in your arsenal. Ash made the communion show earlier this season, gets a strike there. 
Ash made three shows last season. My best balance I've ever had staying like that. Third twice, fourth once. I hear right. Hasn't won though since the USBC Masters back in late October of 07. Barnes, 25 better right now. Uh, Mika Poivu Miami. Big Finn working on his only strike of the day. And he still only has one strike. Yeah, and he Good doesn't situation. like that left lane. Or excuse me. Doesn't like the right lane, and the right lane's the good lane. Barnes looking for. Well, he really wanted that one. Working on three in a row. Mika. Spare there. Barnes, he's really taking it to his roommate. He's, uh, Wayne Jinxon. Except for that. <sighs> now you know that Mika's really going to give it to him. Chris has got a commanding lead and then just steps up and whips a 10. So we wrap up our fifth frame. Monticelli looking for an opening five bagger. Not finding it. First miss of the day. He started perfectly with a front four, and now he leaves himself with a tough three, six, nine, ten spare conversion attempt. Neil with his third strike in the match. You know the uh, the world team is in trouble when I need to more on the, left the lane. guys from the U.S. figure out that left lane. Rattles that one into the cage. So, Mornicelli remains clean through five. Team USA led overall by one pin after three frames. They led by 16 after four. And that's where we stand after five. We, there in the fifth frame, the USA was up 16. And now it is the world team on top overall by eight pins. So halfway through, the world team has six points. The U.S. only three. Remember, you need five points to win. Nine points total out there. Kimo has had a variety of emotions today for us. The head-to-head -head matchups worth one point. The total pins per team, higher value there at three. Michael Haugen. Welcome back to the South Point Bowling Center here in Las Vegas. Our coverage of the USA versus the world in PBA action and a 24-pin swing there in the fifth frame. The USA was up 16, and now it is the world team on top overall by eight pins. So halfway through, the world team has six points. The U.S. only three. Remember, you need five points to win. Nine points total out there. Kimo has had a variety of emotions today for us. The head-to-head -head matchups worth one point. The total pins per team, higher value there at three. Michael Haugen. Just shy of his fourth strike in his head-to-head -head matchup with Kimo Lettonen. Because there's three points for totals, every pin counts for every player. Just because you're out of an individual match doesn't mean you're taking out some test balls and trying some stuff out. You are still going for count. Exactly right. Ronnie Russell on the left. Dan McClellan, the Canadian, on the right. Three fins. One Canadian. One Australian. One Venezuelan. That's Canadian bacon. That's a hamburger right there. <laughs> all, all you folks thought I was crazy when I told you how good that kid was back at the Shark uh, Championship. And, see, I told you he was good. Just throw a four-bagger at you. Russell's 10-pin won't drop. 
Another big, steep, high backswing. Like <clears throat> Dan McClellan, his opponent. But no love on the ring 10. Tend to drop, and we head to the international bench. Kimberly with PBA World Championship fifth seed, Mika Koivu Niemi. Mika, you know, there were three Finnish competitors with you on this team. Is Finland the new capital or hotspot of bowling? Uh, it's not the new, it's always been there. We have been one of the top countries last 50 years, and uh, we only have four Finnish guys here, so sadly, one of them didn't make this team. The one who did not make it, Joni Helmanen. Team Finland finishing second to USA in the World Championships in Germany last summer as Malat cleans that up. So the big nasty remains clean. Three spares, three strikes. Ospu Palerma, four strikes, working off one here, working off one in the fifth. Here's his effort coming up in the sixth. Team USA needs to step it up because they're starting to get, they're starting to get it put to them right now. You got McClellan with a four-bagger. chemo has got a double. Belmo's got a double. Mm. Needs this to close the gap. Oh, no. Bad time for that. There, there for Oski. Wow. Takes care of the two and not the ten. Here's your more of what matters to you fan question brought to you by the makers of One A Day. Comes from Matthew in Burnsville, Minnesota. Randall. How do lane conditions in the USA compare to those in other countries and how do the international players have to adjust? at the recently completed World Series of Bowl. Well, Rob, in years past, the lanes were always drier everywhere outside the U.S. But now, the rest of the world has caught up with oil patterns because of the technology in oiling machines. So the rest of the world has access to the same technology that we do here in the U.S. Mika's second strike, both of them coming on that difficult left That's lane. The Mika, strike. the okay. number five seed at the upcoming PBA World Championship. There's your top eight finalists from the recently completed PBA World Series bowling. All eight move on. Here's your four seed, Chris Barnes, on how challenging it was. There's no faking your way through this format. You know, 12 games, five different patterns. Uh, you know, lack of sleep. It was a mental endurance. It was a physical endurance. The guys that made it this week bowled awfully well. And uh, if they're not the top eight in the world, they're, they're certainly very close to it. Barnes in action Saturday, 9 Eastern on ESPN2. The finals come your way on Sunday. Here is Barnes, his effort in the sixth. Guys, the U.S. is in trouble. Not only can they not strike now, they're having trouble making spares. And they're struggling on the right lane, which of the two has been the easier. And they're struggling on the good lane. Now, I know this is a tough competition because the players aren't used to this much time in between each shot. You notice it's starting to get a little quieter on the U.S. side, though? Not as much chirping on that bench. Not too many reasons to chirp. Monicelli. <laughs> <laughs> At an opening four-bagger. Six spare in the fifth. Here he is in the sixth. Oh, man. Big break. And they're getting all the breaks their way. So instead of 2-8-10, it's just the 2-8. Just when the USA needed an opening. Now, Bill O'Neill working on a strike. It's that time, man. It's time to start striking. And that trend continues. Oh, my. Yeah. 
Shelley chops down the double wood. He remains clean, so after four opening strikes, he gets back-to-back -back spares. And the USA, who had the lead in the third and the fourth, with overall pins losing it now. Well, that graphic just goes to show you how quickly things can swing. At the end of four, the USA was on top total pins by 16. Two frames later, it's the world team on top by 70. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, welcome you back to bowling's version of the Ryder Cup. Coming your way from Las Vegas, Team USA versus the world. Frame seven, Kimo with the strike. Danny Mack from Team Canada representing the world team. Another strike, Jason Belmonte from Australia. You sensing a theme here, Randy? Another strike, Sean Rash in the seventh, trouble. There's that hang spot again on the left lane. Notice all the strikes for the international players coming on the right lane. And another frame from Sean, so there's your standings through seven frames. Again, you win one point for an individual win, three points for the team total. We move now to the eighth frame. Kimo had a strike last frame. Here's an open frame in the eighth. Danny Mack following suit with an open frame of his own. Open frame and lost count. Michael Halgan Jr. trying to get the rally started for the Team USA. Team USA on the right lane. Haugen strikes. Ronnie Russell gets up. That's 10 in the pit. Big West Malott looking to keep the string going. There's another one. How about a late rally? Bill O'Neill, keep it going. Team USA right back in this. And then Sean Rash steps up and whips a single pin spare. Team USA put together a minor rally in the eighth frame. They're going to need a major rally in the final two frames if they hope to win this event. USA versus the world coming your way from the South Point Bowling Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada, which was always, which was also the host to the PBA World Series of Bowling. Michael Haugen Jr. doing his part for Team USA. 44 pin advantage over Kimo Lettonen. So a pair of strikes there for Haugen. Well, he's doing his part. He's pulled a great game for strike out in the 10th frame for 247. up the rack there in this Ryder Cup-esque showdown between the USA and the world on the lanes. Ronnie Russell up for Team USA. He's had three strikes, but none of them have been paired together. He has an opportunity here to do that in the ninth, down just 28 in his individual matchup. No strikeout. There will be no pocket hit either. He has no clue as to what to do on the left lane. <laughs> DMAC did not like that, but he still gets eight to drop. Team USA cannot get there unless they swing strikes. Ryan Russell needs to convert here and think about striking out in the 10th frame. Last shot on that lane, boss. I almost said good spirit, but then I said it didn't work. Spare. The overall pin lead at 64. Belmonte with a 29 pin advantage for West Vermont. Dropping some smack at the Big Nasty. He's been talking to the Big Nasty throughout the competition. <laughs> and it's worked. Almost another gutter ball from Malak. Belmonte looking for five in a row and finding it. I'm just, I'm just wondering, 
Justin didn't have the best of World Series of bowlings when he got on the television, which he did fine, but once the lights came on, he struggled a little bit. But he's up in his game here today. And big cleanup there for Malat. Sean Rash. Back to back to back open frames for the American. And he gets the ball in the left lane. Yeah. I'm not sure he wants to even throw it. Could be a ham bone of opens, Rob. Mm. Oh, just a tad. I mean, I scared myself after the last one of them. Little scoop. I mean, he is just destroying Rash in the head-to-head -head battle. Making it look easy is the shark champion. How about Oscar who says, you know what? I'm having such a good time. Let me just throw it with one hand this time. Rash failed to convert the 310. So it is a hand bone of opens frames, yeah. for Rash. And it's nothing to be proud of. Now, this is a tight one. Chris Barnes needs to hold on to this. Just to have the bragging rights for, you know, between the roomies, right? Who gets to control the uh, remote? Mm, messenger. Little hip check. Oh, and you know Mika's gonna. <laughs> what was that? It's hard not to like Mika. Barnes, four strikes, but he's working off a spare. Here he is in the ninth. Really good shot there. Really good. Mika second, second strike of the frame for Team USA. It's a two-pin match now between him and Mika, and Mika's working on a double. Spare, spare, open frame, spare. Here he is in the ninth. Mm. Oh, it's the 10. O'Neill looking for three in a row. Might be able to steal a point with a late rally here. Mm, messenger! Does not deliver. The scout lost the scent. Could not get the 10 to drop. Team Leto takes care of that one. Team USA in big trouble, sir. O'Neal takes down the 10 as well. Yeah. Team USA led in overall pins by one after three frames, by 16 after four frames. And then that lead went away. And now they are in their biggest hole yet with just one frame to go. Team World on top by 105 total pins. with two individual matchups in their favor. But the total pin advantage, 105. The biggest it's been all day long for the world team. Really, the only chance they have is if Team USA strikes out in the 10th frame and just about every one of the world players opens in the tent. Yeah, Michael, he's doing his part. He's in the 240s. That's what your leadoff bowler is supposed to do for the team. Let's see if his... Uh, his teammates can follow suit. One more, and then it's up to Kimo Lehtinen.
Nicely done, Michael. Good game. Now the Team USA will sit back and hope that Kimo doesn't strike on the first ball in the 10th frame. This is exactly what we're talking about. Strike out in the 10th frame, put a little pressure on your opponent. Kimo goes right through the nose, leaves the 2-7. Now he's got to convert the baby split to avoid an open frame. Kimo already with three open frames today, Randy. Make it four. One point for USC. Overall lead. Down to 74, so what was once a 105 pin lead. Now shaved down to 74, a 31 pin positive swing. Here's Ronnie Russell. Oh, man. Good shot there. Only to leave a ring in 10 and just three strikes today for Russell. None of them have been paired together. Russell for the spare conversion. And he'll get one more attempt. It's a real rally killer right there. Good shot thrown, ringing 10, can't double up. Now he has to sit back and hope Dan McClellan opens in the 10th frame so that the USA can continue to, to gain ground on Team World. Sure, of course, always on the fill shot. So we go Canadian now. Dan McClellan, a student right now at Saginaw Valley State. Was the collegiate player of the year there in the 07-08 season, a member of the junior Team Canada side for a couple of years, and can't get the 10 to drop. So if Dan spare here, spares here and then strikes, nothing gained, nothing lost. In the total pins, but in the total pins, Dan is still going to defeat Ronnie Russell. So he will earn the world team one point. So it's 1-1. One, one. USA with one individual victory and Team World with another, but some of these other head-to-head -head matchups heavily skewed in favor of the world side. The US is only ahead in one other match. They're looking at total points right now, Rob, which is a three-point swing. Five pins picked up right there. Nickel and dime your way. Pretty soon you have a dollar. Again, after nine frames, the world team led by 105 total pins. That has since been shaved to 69. The arrows highlighting matches, individual matches that have already been won. So one point for Team USA with the Haugen victory. McClellan's victory ties it up at one all. Here is Wes Malott taking on Jason Belmonte. And Belmo has had the Big Nasty's number all day long. Now, wait a drop all 10 their way. It's been a tough run for Wes. He has danced with that gutter most of the afternoon. Well, Wes can still shoot 216 if he strikes out. And that's the, I mean, that's the key to try to get back into this. You gotta just pick at it. But Wes needs to, to double up here and then hopes, hope that Belmo doesn't throw a six pack. Belmo was working on a five bagger bowling, a huge game. This would be Malat's sixth strike if he can get them all to drop, and he does. That's There's a double in the tenth. I mean, that's big. Now, if Belmo doesn't strike, hey, the Team USA is going to pick up more pins. If he splits, even better. Nasty. It's okay. So, Malat's day done. Belmo on the tough left lane. He's been sitting for a while. Let's see if he can uh, 
make the shot he needs to make. He's really been the strength of the world team today. Opened up with a two-bagger, went spare, spare, and since then, nothing but strikes for the two-handed bowler from Australia. And with that strike there, this match between Jason Belmonte and Wes Mallott is Thanks. over. Thanks. This and was a good so game. I called a good game. Any hopes that the USA might have of winning this tournament? I mean, it's basically all but mathematically over. Team World with two wins already. Here's Sean Rash. The 10 pin. Been a tough, tough outing for Sean. <laughs> Get a chance to redeem himself next week at the Aaron World Aaron Championships, Aaron where he is the number two seed, and he's been working hard to get back to his winning ways. Well, it takes time. You know, it takes the time. It goes back to the the routine of what I was doing years ago when I was really successful. Um, last summer, I had a chance to go back to school at Wichita State and work with Coach Lewis and Coach Vatican about a, a few mental things, and then even. I remember the week before Columbus last year, I actually worked with, with Lewis and said, hey, I need to do some video of what's going on because things are just awful. And uh, we, we brought up when I won the Masters and won Baltimore and there was just some slight tweaks in my footing and a few things with my arm swing and, you know, the mentality of giving myself a chance and grinding through it, remembering that if you shoot 160, someone else is probably going to too and you can't control the pass and you need to move forward. And just trying to stay as positive as you know as possible. Better days may be ahead, though, for Rash, the newly engaged young man. Your number two seed for next week's first major of the season. Should he win, he'll take on Bill O'Neill for the title at the PBA World Championship. Here's Osku in the tent. <laughs> so, Osku Palermo, the finished two-handed bowler, earns another point for the world side. Bit of a gunslinger there, huh? That's fast and whippy. Chris Barnes up next as he takes on Mika Koivu Niemi. Barnes with the chance, though, to win one for Team USA. And here is Barnes in the tent. So a pair there. Personal pride on the line for Chris Barnes taking on roommate Mika Koivuniemi. Chris can still strike out to shoot 227. The best Mika can shoot 225. Still need one more. Yeah. Messenger! Yeah! Down she goes! Go get him, boy! That's not over yet. That's the only way. Yeah, That's the only way. <laughs> oh, Mika's giving it right back to him. That's the only way you can beat me. God, where was this all game? Come on. Uh, okay. Uh, nine. Only nine. Winner, winner. Another one. Chicken dinner. Triple X in the tent. Chris Barnes, your country is proud of you. Does that mean Finland is not proud of Mika? Oh, no. Finland will always be proud of Mika, sir. Mika understands, and so does Finland, that Chris Barnes got lucky to beat him. Chris's victory, just the second individual victory today for Team USA. They're Looking for a third, Bill O'Neill is going to have to have a late flurry. And M. Leto is going to have to do a little choke job here in the tent. Yeah, that's a good start to a late rally. O'Neill giving a strike there, his first effort in the tent. Beautiful shot there. That's 10 in the pit. Watch all 10 get sucked right off the deck. Right on the second arrow, out to about the third board. Right now, Bill O'Neill looking for. A little personal glory. Trying 
and it's still one away from Michelle. Another strike for the guy who is your number one seed for next weekend's PBA World Championship. There's an old saying in bowling, Rob, hit him thin and watch him spin. It's that little light mixture shot there. I've heard that phrase from you a few times, my friend. His final efforts of the day. In the tent, three in a row. So that's a 2-0-1 for O'Neill in the books. Little Monticelli just needs good count and a mark. Never get tired of watching this guy throw it. Oh, what a classy individual he is. 49 years of age, and the only way you would know it would be by the gray in his hair. This just got interesting. Well, I can't remember the last time I saw the 467 picked up on television. Ever. And Leto cuts you right to the it. heart with that shot there. O'Neill strikes out in the 10th round. Looks like he's going to steal a point away. He does. So Monicelli with a 193. O'Neill wins that matchup. But the world team takes the nice overall day. title, defeating the USA 6-3. Team USA had their last total pin advantage in the fourth frame when they were on top by 16. And then it just went downhill fast. They had a 24-pin swing. By the end of the fifth, Team World was up eight, and they never looked back. At one point, 105 advantage after nine frames, and they conclude with a 43 total pin victory, winning it overall 6-3 to three over Team USA. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, welcoming you back to Las Vegas. Time now for our championship recap, brought to you by Geico. Randy, we're not looking for a scapegoat, but I think we found one for Team USA. Well, Sean got off to a pretty good start, marking the first five frames, but after that, it's been nothing but downhill. He opened in the sixth, opened in the seventh, flags that seven pin in the eighth, and opened again in the ninth frame. While Oscu Palermo, well, he pretty much had a cakewalk in their match and just showed you he can not only strike with two hands, but also with one. Eight of the 12 bowlers today will be seen live next week. Our three days worth of coverage at the PBA World Championship. Your number one seed, Bill O'Neill. He may be the best in the world right now. I don't know. I think when people say that I'm, I'm the best in the world, I think it kind of, I, I don't really think so at the moment. I mean, I, I have a lot of confidence, and I think that, that you know, I'm probably a top five, top ten player. But um, there's, you know, there's still flaws in my game that I think I need to, to fix before I, before I can get to that, that spot. I'm extremely hard on myself, but I think that's what, that's what drives people. And I think if you look at guys like Chris Barnes and Walter Ray, they're, they're extremely hard on themselves as well. And they, they expect to win every time they step on the lanes, and, and I do as well. Friday, our coverage begins live, 5 Eastern. Saturday, 9 Eastern. And then Sunday, the finals at 1 Eastern on ESPN of the first major of the year. Bill O'Neill will be your number one seed, and you will see him live on Sunday. Team World taking down Team USA 6-3 to three for Kimberly, Randy, and our tire crew. I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.